Hey there. During the first Shaping Fire sessions, I sat down with Kevin Jodry of Wonderland Nursery in Humboldt County, and by all accounts, it was a huge success. Uh, not only did he and I have a really good time making it for you, but tens of thousands of you have watched the videos, and so we are calling it a success. Um, if you have not seen the Kevin Jodry sessions, uh, you can go ahead and click up on the playlist above and see all the episodes bundled together and watch them all at once. Uh, today, though, I am here to launch uh, Shaping Fire Sessions number two. Uh, this time I sat down with Dr. Ethan Russo. I'm very grateful that over the holidays, uh, Ethan invited me over to his house and we did a long interview um, on a wide range of topics that are now uh, cut up into topic related snippets that we'll be publishing over the next month or so. And uh, as you'd expect, we talked a lot about terpenes. We talked about managing pain with terpenes, uh, how much of a particular terpene you need for some sort of medical efficacy. Um, we also talked about the potential for terpene uh, toxicity when dabbing. Um, we hit on a couple other non-terpene topics too, including, for example, um, how mushrooms, uh, psilocybin mushrooms, work on the brain uh, to cause uh, neurological healing. And also uh, this first episode, uh, which is on uh, what foods that you can eat to uh, support your endocannabinoid system in addition to the you know uh, cannabinopathic care that you're giving your body so uh, so we've got a whole bunch of episodes that are gonna be coming out this is number one uh, thanks a lot to true terpenes for um, sponsoring uh, the YouTube channel so we could bring you this series and uh, here we go enjoy So Ethan, thank you so much for getting together today. You know, the first question I wanted to ask you, um, when you do your presentations, you'll often kind of mention in passing that, you know, we can do all of this uh, cannabinoid um, supplementation of our endocannabinoid system to help strengthen it. Um, but often you'll mention that there may be foods that we can eat as well, which will strengthen the endocannabinoid system. And so I followed that a little bit and I found that you have an entire paper on it. And so um, I hope that you would break down for us kind of simply um, the foods that, that everyone, and especially patients, could be eating to help support and strengthen their endocannabinoid system in addition to the regular cannabinoid therapies they're working on. Sure. Well, there's no simple single food. Uh, that's going to serve that purpose on toning up the endocannabinoid system. But um, in general, uh, an anti-inflammatory diet, which is very different from what Americans typically eat, yeah. whether it's fried foods and uh, emphasis on that kind of thing, uh, is not advantageous. Uh, rather, in general, uh, having a lot of fruits and vegetables it's going to be anti-inflammatory and much more beneficial. Um, a lot of attention has been paid towards things like uh, fish oil uh, and other essential fatty acids, and those are great, uh, being strongly anti-inflammatory, but um, we don't have any evidence that they directly increase the endocannabinoid tone. Uh, the real answer is that to do this nutritionally, you have to be a little bit indirect mm. uh, and affect the microbiome. The microbiome are the gut bacteria, and people have probably been hearing more about this. They may have heard the term probiotics, which are beneficial bacteria like are in yogurt and in lacto-fermented foods. Um, these um, have a strong anti-inflammatory effect on the gut uh, they help prevent uh, diseases such as diarrhea. But beyond that, we have increasing evidence that they have a key role in increasing the gain in the endocannabinoid system. But beyond that, it's not just a matter of increasing these bacteria, but they have to have the, the right food themselves. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what we might throw at them in a typical American diet isn't going to be helpful that way. Um, rather, they like things that are a little bit hard for humans to digest. Um, so these include certain kinds of vegetable fibers. People are not likely familiar with things like burdock root or acacia fiber, uh, but these are fibers that are normally indigestible for humans, but are sort of the great feedstock 
for the gut bacteria. Mm. Um, one of the simpler groups of foods that's really helpful are the Eleaceae. So that is your onions, leeks, garlic. Um, and the gut bacteria really like those as well. Um, but there are some simple supplements that people can use. Burdock can uh, be obtained in supplement capsules and the acacia fiber uh, is available online if it's not in your store. And for instance, it's a simple thing to add a tablespoon of that uh, to granola in the morning. And um, if someone's taking a good probiotic with a wide variety uh, of species, not single agents, mm -hmm. Um, chances are they're going to see some benefits down the road um, in all kinds of things. First of all, the regulation of their gut, uh, maybe less pain, uh, improved sleep, even clearing up of acne in the face. Uh, so these are all things that have been tied in uh, to the endocannabinoid system and the gut bacteria. What is that tie-in point? Um, your first part was all about the anti-inflammatories. Is the anti-inflammatory what happens at the same time as supporting the endocannabinoid system? Or is it through taking, is it the decrease in inflammatory that is is the actual benefit of the endocannabinoid system? Where's the tie-in? Well, it's, it's really both. Mm. Um, but if someone's eating a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables, particularly dark colored berries, so mm. blueberries, for example, uh, these have a lot of flavonoids in them. These are, are natural antioxidants, um, and there are correlations that have been drawn between having a, a diet that's rich in these kinds of foods and uh, lower risk of things like cancer. Um, so it all ties together, and so the old adage, you are what you eat, has a lot of merit. Um, from when we've talked in the past about uh, uh, the entourage effect and flavonoids being part of what's important of what we're getting out of cannabis, um, are we essentially saying that we're, we're getting some of the essential parts that support the endocannabinoid system just from another source that's not cannabis? So we're getting flavonoids, we're just getting non-cannabis flavonoids, and it uh, supports the endocannabinoid system. Yeah, to some extent, we're still looking at those relationships, but uh, clearly having bioflavonoids in the diet is going to be an advantage to overall health. Right cool. And if you want to read Dr. Russo's paper on this topic, you can go ahead and find the link in the first comment below. Thank you.